you don't have to play their game. You don't have to buy the narrative or the counter narrative. You cannot win this game, but you can stop playing. It may or may not seem obvious, but like it or not, we're being manipulated. Our attention is steered, cognitive biases exploited, subconscious influenced, and the world around us orchestrated. As humans, we want to feel in control, like we're driving the car. But just because you're behind the steering wheel doesn't mean your car isn't being towed. There are endless ways we're influenced, such as subliminals, propaganda, psychological warfare, social contagions, peer pressure, exploiting cognitive biases, and conditioning that limits creativity, originality, and potential. There are many more forms, but we will be discussing the most common ones today. The old standards of flat-out shame, embarrassment, and fear are still very effective at keeping people under control. Gaslighting is another tactic which includes the manipulator instilling false and one-sided information to the victims, making them doubt their cognition, memory, and mental state, thus distrusting themselves and blindly obeying the other party. Thinking has been exchanged for being told what to do. Subliminal perception, a method to keep the subject unaware of the source of their stimulation. The desire is not to keep them unaware of what they are doing, but rather to keep them unaware of why they are doing it, by masking the external cue or message with subliminal presentation and so stimulating an unrecognized motive. This involves everything from traditions to addictively checking your phone. You don't really know why you're doing the things you're doing. Where we are today is the result of generations in the making. All of history adds up, like a snowball, accumulating as time goes on. Our world has become more and more interconnected, and media is virtually inescapable. Social media has revolutionized how people create and consume information. Unlike the broadcasts of traditional media, which are passively consumed, social media depends on users to deliberately propagate the information they receive to their social contacts. This process, called social contagion, can amplify the spread of information in a social network. The age of synchronized programming is coming to a close with the decline of cable and rise of streaming services. That's because we have been conditioned to be entertained with our phones as opposed to doing things like going outside. If the TV is off, that doesn't mean psychological manipulation isn't happening. Propaganda is inescapable in our modern world exactly as it was designed to be. Most of us are familiar with the concept of subliminals, which are hidden suggestions that only our subconscious perceives. They can be audio, hidden behind music, or visual, airbrushed into a picture, flashed on a screen so fast that you don't consciously see them, or cleverly incorporated into a picture or design. Subliminal messaging, or subliminal messages, are visual or auditory stimuli that the conscious mind cannot perceive, often inserted into other media such as TV commercials and songs. This kind of messaging can be used to strengthen or heighten the persuasiveness of advertisements, or to convey an altogether different message entirely. As the following clip shows, subliminal messages are not only used in advertising. In the 1960s, U.S. TV programming would end for the night with this video of the National Anthem. When the video is slowed down, you can see that there are different words behind the scrolling words to the National Anthem. That is subliminal messaging and is practically undetectable. Imagine what they're doing today if this was already being done 60 years ago. Clickbait is another form of programming. You get source amnesia because you read a headline, but you don't know where you heard it or if it's even true. One example most of us believe is the lie that the way to achieve good eyesight is to eat carrots. Carrots are good for many things 
But that myth came from a World War II propaganda campaign to confuse German pilots. The average person sees somewhere between 4,000 and 10,000 advertisements every day. Ads are designed to change your opinion about a brand or a product. Most assume the reason for ads is to show you a product or service and make you want to pick up the phone and buy it. But that's not entirely true. Why do brands that have universal recognition, so much so that they advertise this very fact, still pay to advertise? Because this is an ad with no logo. Because it's not about getting you to buy something once. It's about building reputation and brand image. Cults use this tactic as well. It's called building rapport. We will take a look at cults in part two of this series. The more familiar you are with something, the more comfortable you feel. Things you love and brands you trust. The same tactic is used to familiarize the public with celebrities, artists, ideologies, and political officials. Exposure to a brand makes the consumer comfortable and feel as if they know it. Before the 80s, brands were usually things. After the 80s, brands also became people. Exposure equals recognition, which equals trust. Repeated exposure to a product in order to associate a positive effect to it is in fact the most common approach in advertising. Another advertising trick is priming. That's when ads show us a specific behavior to condition us to emulate it. It isn't just ads that do this. Predictive programming can fit into this category as well. Do you think major companies would spend tens of billions on these tactics if they were not effective? This trick has a much darker side. It's often used in social engineering to get taboo topics to become assimilated into culture. Propaganda normalizes something taboo. When something is repeated enough times, it becomes normalized. And once it's not stigmatized anymore, it's accepted. Once accepted, it's nearly impossible to reject. We start to hear it over and over and over again, and then it starts to normalize the idea of, oh, maybe this isn't such a bad thing. Right. But you know what? Women are owning theirs right now, and Absolutely. they just need to sit back and just let us rock out. Because when you got so many really high-profile ladies that are singing along to this song yes. and going with it as well, just sit down. The best example of the next method is to start with the word Pavlov. Notice I didn't say Pavlov's dogs or explain what I was talking about. But chances are most of you proved his point of conditioning by associating his last name to the dog experiment. Association through correlation or affective conditioning. The way Pavlov trained the dogs to associate the sound of the bell with food, brands associate positive feelings, images, or ideas with their product so you subconsciously relate the two. Zero sugar. Still smart off. Another example is Coca-Cola's holiday campaign, which actually changed the face of Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. Well, in 1931, the Coca-Cola company was trying to find a way to associate Coca-Cola with the holidays. Just ask anyone what Santa Claus looks like. He's wearing a red suit with a... Uh... Dark leather boots. Very curly beard gentleman. The bright red head with the white fur around it. You are not responsible for the programming you received as a child, but as an adult, you are responsible for being aware of it. The first step to knowing how to break free is recognizing you're in a cage. Learn to read between the lines and not take things at face value, like the news we are given every day. Understand why certain stories are given to us and others are never reported. One of the most overlooked forms of manipulation is information control. People seek escapism from depressing news, much like they turned to the cinema in the 1930s. This is an example of social engineering. The depressing news is overwhelming, which causes us to seek refuge from the relentless programming by going to entertainment as an escape. Cinema is a multidimensional art capable of affecting our neurophysiologic structure in different ways. Studies show that different parts of the brain are activated while watching a structured film, and consequently, the movie imitates consciousness structure. This imitation of the consciousness structure enables cinema to deeply influence the brain. The effect, and its manner, 
are the main themes of the newly emerged science of neuro-cinema. The problem is that media of all kinds is one of the most powerful forms of psychological manipulation, not any different from the relentless news cycles. Entertainment has consequences. Be careful what you choose to consume. Thought conditioning is also done interactively via social media. For example, trending posts on sites like Reddit, Tumblr, or Facebook are manipulated by algorithms specifically to be seen by as many as possible or to promote certain narratives under the guise of seeming organic. The inverse is also true. They suppress information and opinions that are not in favor of whatever change they wish to achieve. Maybe anything that moves young and impressionable minds is orchestrated to some extent, like the hippie movement of the 60s and 70s. Gentle people 